Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two. Let me see if this is working. It's been a while since I live streamed. And I've really been fighting the setup all night and it's cold out. Let me see if I'm live. Oh, I guess I am live. Okay, I guess I am live to some degree. Uh, looks like we are. So what I wanted to do tonight is a live view of Jupiter. And we have an IO transit and let me get that active again here through the ASI Air app. And yeah, you can see, hopefully, let me try to reposition the scope here just a touch. Definitely going to be looking at moving to Windows. One of the things that I do is work with a Mac um, on the Mac system. And the ASI Air ZWO just opened up with the M1 chips on the Apple I.O. system. They, you have the capability of taking an I.O.S. app and using it on the laptop. And so I'm on a MacBook Pro. And so you can use the ASI Air app, and that's how I'm connected. To the, um, to the telescope system. And I have a video I'm going to share with you here in a minute that shows you exactly what that setup looks like. While I'm doing this, I'm not sure. I'm monitoring chat where. Okay. Yeah, I'll monitor chat up here on the on the desktop. So one thing I one problem I have is the refresh it, the on the iOS app on the MacBook. The and if you have any tips or ideas on what to do here, but it really doesn't maintain the live stream for very long. But when we're looking at the live stream, look at this right here. You can see IO right there on the edge. I'm going to start capturing some video data here. I capture it both in the AVI mode and in an MP4 mode. And hopefully this will stack and look pretty good. Now, I guess I just totally crashed my ASI Air. Yeah, it's just way too finicky. I uh, had it working, and um, but I'm going to move to a Windows-based system, I guess, and start to get into those uh, those apps because I really like the live stream. I like to do more public observing via the live stream apps, and so um, this one's just the the ASI Air app on a Mac OS is just not reliable enough. But I wanted to try it, give it a try tonight. And, um, but you can see IO, if you can zoom in, let's go to a little higher, well, well actually lower resolution, but it'll give us a, uh, there we go. Can you see IO right here on the edge? You can see I'm connected via ethernet to the ASI Air. And you can see IO right there on the edge of the disc. You can still see it in the wider field of view there. We do not have a red spot transit until a little bit later on this evening. And I don't know if anyone's watching. Let's check our channel here. Um, 
Who watching? I don't know. We got a couple of people watching. Thank you for joining us. This is Jeff Ball Photography, just doing a live stream here of Jupiter and an IO on the surface um, going across the disk, but the actual shadow transit won't come up until a bit later. Let me show you what that looks like in Sky Safari. So in a little bit, so this is the this is Io right on the edge of the disk, real time. Let's go forward here a little bit. I'm going to put this in motion, and you can see how Io transits the disk. So I'm going to stop it right there, and that would be at about 9:40 Eastern time. You can see Io's right here. Now what I want you to do is look over here. We're going to start to see the shadow come across the disk. There it is. So really that's going to happen. Let me back that up. Well, really at about 945 you might see that shadow. I'm not sure I'm going to stay broadcasting that long. And when you see the video of my setup, you're going to see that I have a very compromised, very compromised backyard where the tree line really goes up as high as zero degrees uh, declination right on the ecliptic. And so I start to run into trees to the west, but I have to put this out in the road. So uh, let me see if we have some other people on here. Start the stream. We've got a couple people uh, jump in on the chat. Uh, I'd love to Love to hear where you're from, what you do with astronomy. Uh, if you're actually, the views are pretty nice tonight with uh, Jupiter. I look. This would be this field of view with the uh, equipment. And again, I have a video that I'm going to show you in, in just a few minutes that goes over the equipment. I would say this would be approximating like a 200 250x view through an eyepiece on the telescope. And uh, the waviness that you see is what in astronomy we refer to as the seeing conditions. And that's the, the atmosphere, the turbulence in the atmosphere, the moisture and, and wind and upper, upper atmosphere winds that are impacting our ability to see a steady view. It's like looking through water and um, a body of water. There's, wa there's waviness in that. If you can still see the disk of Io there, and let's go in a little closer. Yeah, there we go. You, it still shows up as a contrasty uh, object there against the disk. See, I keep dropping the keep dropping the video footage, and I just have to refresh with a different different frame rate, and it brings it right back. But unfortunately, um, I keep dropping it. So I'm going to really look at. I tried to make this Mac iOS system work, and it's really frustrating. So I'm going to try a uh, Windows-based system and use the standard capture software for Windows. But of course, visually, the two more prominent feature features here on Jupiter are these these belts, um, equatorial belts, and I'm going to show you in a little bit some of the resources that NASA has on the planet Jupiter and our entire solar system. It's a it's really an incredible resource for for yourself, for students to learn about the solar system. And if we can get a moment where I'm going to maintain the grab. So what I'm going to do, I'm in this app, ASI Air app. I'm going to try to capture some video here. Oops, I guess I've been capturing video all along. <laughs> that was six minutes of video. I'm going to try to grab 
probably about 30 seconds, uh, a little bit less than 30 seconds, the uh, <laughs> Jupiter. <laughs> so I apologize if my cat comes up here. You know, you coming up? Hmm? Yeah. And I hope you don't hit the keyboard there. This is JoJo. JoJo is a stray that we picked up um, literally just a couple of weeks ago. She's been in the house, so she's really a, a pretty good cat, but uh, she does like all cats, like the keyboard. So, yeah, let's try to stay out of there. And, oops, I lost track. Did anyone remind me? Hey, thanks for joining us. If you're just stepping in, we're doing a live view of Jupiter through, uh, through a refractor telescope. I have a video here in a minute I'm going to show. I was just trying to see if we get some more viewers in. Shows the, the, the setup for this evening with my refractor and the ZWO cameras and setup in the mount. So what we're doing is just monitoring. Actually, what we're doing is we're watching the IO, the moon IO, transit the face of Jupiter. Again, if you're just joining us, let's go back to a live view with Sky Safari. And let me put this on now. So this would be the representation. I really wish we could see Jupiter like this. They spoil us a little bit with the graphics on these planetarium programs, but this is the way Jupiter looks right now. This is Io transiting. Uh, that would be this, I believe they have this upright, so that's the southern equatorial belt. And if we continue this broadcast and we don't have clouds, then we might see the shadow of Jupiter transit in a bit. Oop, I'm not sure I showed you that. No, I didn't. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is the view of Jupiter through Sky Safari. And you can see Io, this is real time, Eastern time. We are at, what are we, 832 Eastern time. And so Io is in the Southern Equatorial Belt, ready to cross, and we're going to advance this. We're gonna put this in motion, and you can start to see Io's shadow come in right at about the same location on the disk in about, one hour, about one hour, that shadow will come across. Let's check back in, see how our live view is doing. We've had intermittent clouds throughout the evening. Let me turn up the exposure a little bit. I do that mostly through gain because there we go. Let's brighten it up because I think you can probably see that contrast of IO there a little bit better. Let me capture that 30 second video that I wanted to capture earlier and lost track of. This is at a 960p. Again, I'm going to show a video here of the equipment that I'm using. I might show that a couple of times throughout the night as people come and go. This is pretty good seeing right now. Um, I lost track of the time on that uh, capture. Wasn't oh there we go. Now I'm capturing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now we are capturing video, and I really hope to be able to capture enough video. This is the longest focal length scope I have, and again, it's uh, not a classic SCT. It's it's a refractor. It's a five inch refractor. And I'm going to play that video for you here in just a minute that shows you the equipment that I'm using. So that's about 30 second grab there. Saves it as both an AVI and an MP4. And um, let me go, let me check chat, see if anybody's on there. No chat, jump in on the chat. We've got three folks watching. Thank you for joining us. And this is the video of the equipment that I just barely got set up right around sundown this evening as I uh, got home from work. Okay, if you're seeing this, then everything is working and I barely got it somewhat set up here before darkness. Just to give you an overview of the equipment, this is the 130 EDF Astrophysics Refractor, about 900 millimeters in focal length on the Mach 1 go-to mount. 
and I have to set up in the street because my backyard has a very high tree line and prevents me from getting down below zero degrees declination. So that's why I have to set up in the street when I want to do something at that elevation. The camera, this is first light actually for the ASI 224MC. We are doing an ethernet connection from the ASI Air. This has worked well for me for planetary imaging. And this is going into my office where I hope it's nice and warm. So that's the setup tonight. We are using a 5X, there you think maybe you can see it. There we go. Teleview 5X Barlow. And hopefully all of this is working. So that was a look at my equipment. It's a refractor. It's not a real long focal length, which was what you really like to try for planetary imaging. But what I do is I put a 5X uh, Barlow on it. And this is a very small chip, this 224. Uh, yes, hi Jojo. If you don't know, I have a stray cat we just picked up and the cat could walk across the screen, touch the keyboard at any moment. So I apologize if something happens and we go offline. But the nice thing, when the, AS, the ASI Air works via this Ethernet connection, and I have a very uh, unwieldy 75 foot long Ethernet cable cord that's running out to the street from my office here. And uh, for some reason, it looks like we are maintaining, oh, I, should, I jinxed it. Looks like we really were maintaining a nice stream there of the, of the image. So what I'm going to do, oh boy, come back. There we go. Give me a live stream. You can always tell it's a live stream because the video should be a little jumpy. That's the, the, the unsteady seeing that we have in our atmosphere. What I'd like to do is control the mount here. Center this up a little bit. Hi, Jojo. I know. Oh, gosh. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> I might see a cattail. There we go. Fairly centered. Oops. To go back that way and go back. Ah. I know, I know, I know. Come on, you wanna you know, show everybody how pretty you are and how grateful you are that you're inside the house and not out. No, no, don't stop. do that. No, okay, no. Oh. Goodness gracious. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see. Yeah, can you still pick up IO there? Right on the disc. Let me go to a little little smaller cut of the chip here. Oh boy. Got hung up there. Still getting the video feed, but oh boy. My ASI Air has hung up on me. But uh, thanks to all who are watching. Oh, don't bite the cord. Oh my gosh, this cat's going to be the death of me. Okay. What I might have to do is close out the ASI Air app and start it back because this is the finickiness. If you're just joining me, I've talked about the finickiness of this app on the uh, MacBook system. So this is a little higher resolution, uh, well, lower resolution, but a crop part of the sensor. And you can see IO when you get steady streaming that's over here on the southern equatorial band. In this case, I have a reversed image. Let me show you the live view. Let's go back to the live view with Sky Safari. And let me make sure this has been updated. Let's do now. So there's our live view. See IOs now. Really, it's always surprising how fast things move, isn't it? Um, with um, with time, with the, our orbital mechanics of our solar system objects. And let me get you back to the live feed. Okay. 
There's a live feed. Uh, anyone here watching, do you engage in observing? Do you uh, have uh, telescopes? How many of you have seen a live view of Jupiter through a telescope? That's always, I think Jupiter and Saturn, obviously through the scope, are the highlights of amateur astronomy. So how many in our group here? Well, we got five folks watching. Thank you so much for joining us. I might repeat a video I have that shows the equipment that I'm using for this evening. But uh, again, I'm just asking if anyone has seen Jupiter or Saturn live through a telescope, telescope eyepiece, rather than virtual. So while we're watching, again, the highlight tonight is Io crossing the face of Jupiter at the southern equatorial belt. And if you can see the extra contrast right here of the, the moon, one of the things I'm going to try to do is gather some, some video. And let me go to a little bit higher resolution and try to grab some frames here. Try to grab somewhere around 30 seconds or less. Oops, crashed the system. See, this is the finickiness that I've discussed. But I think, actually, it's probably still recording. If I know, yeah, see what happens. It continues the recording, even though it crashed. So I'm up to 24, 25. So if you're just joining us, I, I've really tried to work with this Mac OS. I'm on a MacBook Pro, and when the M1 chips and, and future M chips came out, it, uh, Apple made all apps. It was able to all apps were able to be turned on and utilized in a MacBook scenario or a Mac OS scenario. And that's what I'm doing. But in this case, in video feed, video grab, it's uh, with this ASI 224 MC camera. Uh, things, you know, just get dropped. Uh, the, the video frame, the video rate. I don't know if it starts to overwhelm the video capability, video graphics of my system. I've really not seen it happen uh, with other camera setups that I've had, but uh, this one seems to be a little bit, a little bit finicky. So let me step away here for a second. Let me check chat. Nothing going on in the chat, but I wanted to share with you a resource that I really started to uh, become engaged in. Let me switch over to that. And this is the Solar System Exploration page at NASA and solarsystem.nasa.gov and just a tremendous resource. This again, if you don't have a planetarium and you're just curious or you're on some other device, let me try it. But I think this is, the only thing I'd say is that this you have the flexibility to change the angle. I'm not sure that there's a way to default the angle to the view from Earth because you can manipulate this. As you can see, it's just a click and drag. But I'm just going to try to approximate where IO is based on the apps that we've been viewing. But this is a real-time calculation, but it's an orbital. You can, and of course, you can see here, Neptune's probably in our field of view on our images. If we increased our exposure long enough, we could probably pick up uh, Neptune. But I don't have the focal length. You saw my focal length. It's about a 900 millimeter focal length scope. I have a 5X Barlow on it. So I guess you would say, you know, um, it's not taking it up to 4,500. It would probably be a little, little less. It's probably more like a 3,000 or upper 3,000 millimeter focal length. And uh, with this chip and cameras, camera combination. It's a pretty narrow field of view, but it at least tries to give me some scale that you can start to see some structure. And it's, you're just a victim of the seeing conditions, which uh, the seeing conditions aren't bad tonight. But when you go to this resource, you can <clears throat> not only get that live view of Jupiter, but it just has in-depth information about the planet. Ten things to know about Jupiter. We all know it's the grandest planet named 
after the, the greatest Greek god of them all, fifth planet from our star, Jupiter rotates about every 10 hours. Now, there are parts of Jupiter, I think, that rotate at different intervals, but every 10 hours is a Jovian day, but it takes 12 Earth years to complete one orbit of the sun. And Jupiter is mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. It's a gas giant. really doesn't have an Earth-like surface anywhere. There is some debate, I believe, if it has an inner core at all. Um, I'm not sure exactly where the consensus is on that inner core, but I, I think it's um, still up for debate. More than 75 moons, I believe, yeah, we're well ahead of 75 moons. I could be wrong on that, but I thought we were in the 80s on that. There is a faint ring, ring system around Jupiter that was discovered as, as early as uh, 1979. There have been nine spacecraft to visit Jupiter, seven flybys, and two have orbited the gas giant. And the great red spot is certainly the calling card and the most prominent feature on the surface of, uh, of Jupiter. Oops, sorry. Go back out to that. And if you want to dig deeper into all of the missions that have flown to Jupiter, well, that's cool. Significant events, 1610, Galileo makes the first detailed observations of Jupiter. That's cool. Uh, and then you have all the craft who have visited uh, that have visited Jupiter and uh, the explorers associated with that. Now for me, I believe it's under significant events. Let me see here. Yeah, here we go. For me, and let me know if in the chat if you were around uh, when this happened, but really what got me into astronomy was the, the event of the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 colliding with Jupiter's southern hemisphere. And we were so fortunate to have Hubble available at that time to image. And if you remember, I don't think they have those images on this page readily available. But if you remember, that was just, to me, just really blew my mind that we were going to watch a solar system object Get, sorry, this is Jojo. If you're new to the stream, Jojo's our stray cat we just picked up. And Jojo loves being where I am working, and in particular on keyboards. You know, let's try not to do this keyboard here right now. But uh, yeah, that comet Shoemaker Levy 9 was just a landmark event in my life and really is what got me interested in astronomy. Oh, I like this as well. Jupiter by the numbers. If you need these, um, they do a comparison here. You can pick, um, I believe, any solar system object to do to do a comparison. But Jupiter versus Earth in size. Uh, the what was some of the other numbers here I liked? Um, yeah, here's one. The volume, the volume of Jupiter versus the volume of Earth. And I'm not even sure. So there's 100,000 million billion trillion, 343 trillion miles versus uh, 100,000 million billion, 259 billion miles on Earth, of Earth. And the surface area, just another one of these staggering numbers versus Earth. And the surface gravity, yeah, 81.3. Uh, escape velocity <laughs> and the atmospheric constituents. Yeah, I love those. I uh, love the side by sides, and I think you can do that. Yeah, you can do a drop down and compare with, um, like, if you wanted to kind of do a direct comparison with Saturn, that's pretty insightful. So that's the NASA solar system.nasa.gov website that really can just give you all of the background and current science on Jupiter and some of the history and some of the uh, current 
understandings of the planet, the number of moons, the atmospheric content, and um, really, really great resource. Let's go back and make sure that I haven't lost uh, my planet here. Looks like something's grinding away. Let's see. Okay. We're still in field of view. We haven't drifted away yet. Let's do a little bit of adjustment here. There we go. Let's see if we can pick up IO transiting across the face of the disk. Let's see if we can see that contrast. It's getting harder, isn't it? At least for me. Uh, let me go to this 480p and it's getting harder to pick up on that contrast. really dropping that video feed. If you're just joining us, had a little quirkiness on this. Oops. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can if we can maintain this stream. I'm connected via Ethernet to a MacBook. Boy, it's really hard to see IO. Thinking it's right in here. Yeah, if I had to guess, it's right in here. Let's go to our live view on Sky Safari. Let's go there now. There we go. Should be, let's see if we can see this feature here. And then try to get, uh, yeah, really, IO loses its contrast on that disk. Oops, sorry, I did not show you the Sky Safari. There we go. <laughs> I keep forgetting I have to change in a couple different places. But there's the Sky Safari, and that's where IO is right now. Right here. So let's see. And my image is reversed, but with the refractor that I'm using. And if you're just joining us, thank you. Welcome. I'm going to show a video that shows the equipment that I'm using for this evening in just another minute and yeah that IO is really tough to pull pull out we could see it pretty well earlier let me see if I can find um, one of my videos yeah let me go oops I don't know if it'll show yeah it will okay let me go here go here so just out of curiosity This is a video that I grabbed earlier. Yeah, I uh, was still in the disc pretty good there. Let me, oh, sorry. Did not mean to do that. Let's go to an earlier video where IO was just starting. Oh, I also, I forget. In video, it is reversed. So IO is up here. So here you can see IO. This was an earlier video from this evening. So let me go back and see if we can see it on this one. Remember now? Yeah, here we go. See, this is reversed from our live view that IO, you can see the contrast right here of IO starting to go across the edge of the disk. And I'm hoping we can stack these images and come up with some decent still images. Let me check chat. Thanks for joining us. If you have a question or you have an observation you'd like to share with the group, please put it in chat. I will 
at this time. If you're new, what I'm going to do is play the video of my scope setup for this evening. Okay, if you're seeing this, then everything is working and I barely got it somewhat set up here before darkness. Just to give you an overview of the equipment, this is the 130 EDF Astrophysics Refractor, about 900 millimeters in focal length on the Mach 1 go-to mount. And I have to set up in the street because my backyard has a very high tree line and prevents me from getting down below zero degrees declination. So that's why I have to set up in the street when I want to do something at that elevation. The camera, this is first light actually for the ASI 224MC. We are doing an ethernet connection from the ASI Air. This has worked well for me for planetary imaging. And this is going into my office where I hope it's nice and warm. So that's the setup tonight. We are using a 5X, there you think maybe you can see it. There we go. Teleview 5X Barlow. And hopefully all of this is working. So that's the setup that we're using this evening. Not the most ideal most of the time as if you follow my channel you know that I'm a deep sky imager. And so most of my focal lengths, this is the longest focal length that I have, around 900 millimeters with those with that 5X Barlow on there. So it's not a, an ideal planetary imaging system. Most people use focal lengths of well over two, 3,000 millimeters, uh, C14s, you know, Celestron 14s, around 4,000 millimeter focal length, uh, native, you know, without any Barlowing, and then they will put a Barlow multiplier on that focal length as well. So th this is just, uh, but I think actually it's a pretty cool image. It looks good. Um, and... Uh, very enjoyable. Come on. Yeah, my polar alignment's hanging in there okay this evening. I hope I'm not missing any chat. Thank you so much for joining the show tonight. We're doing a live broadcast of Jupiter and the crossing of Io across the disk. And if I stay at this long enough, I'm going to have to go check on my system here in just a bit and make sure I'm not going to get into the trees. And then, of course, we've crossed the meridian. And let's do this. Just out of curiosity, let's go down to 240p. There we go. Can we see IO? Really tough, really tough to see IO against that disc. Somewhere in here, we're really losing that contrast. I think I'm gonna grab some video here so I can play with it. The scene actually looks pretty decent uh, right now, I'm seeing pretty nice detail pop in on certain frames. So I'm going to capture around 30 seconds of video. I have a new cat, Jojo, and Jojo is on my coat. Thanks, Jojo. And let's just stop that. That was good. We did not crash capturing the video. Everything was good there. Okay. Again, if you're new and just joining us, thank you. Welcome to the show. Uh, one of the resources I wanted to share with the, the, the 
the attendees and all those is this solarsystem.nasa.gov. And um, it's great for all solar system objects, but of course tonight our main focus being Jupiter. Wanted to give you, the, if you go to this overview page, it will show you a live view. Now what it does, it kind of starts an orbiting motion of Jupiter. I like to just go ahead and stop it. Now in, in our case tonight, we kind of know what, uh, where's Io? It's not showing Io on this. Hmm. You know what? Out of curiosity, I'm going to do something here and take you all with me. We're going to go back to Sky Safari. Hopefully everybody's on Sky Safari here. There we go. Yeah, Io should be right there. This is live now. Oh, there we go. Okay, so Io should be right in here. You know, Io is just such an amazing volcanic uh, planet. I love what Sky Safari does here. You can zoom all the way in and see the kind of the latest imagery that was captured by Galileo and uh, in orbit. And so just an amazing moon. And But it's hard to maintain that view. What we were hoping to see, if we stay at this long enough, is the shadow of Io starts to come across right around right around 943. Mm, if I map this for a uh, well it's it, time's moving fast. It's only another 40 minutes. I'm going to take a break here in a second, go out and check on the scope and make sure everything is working properly and we're not getting into the trees. But this is our live broadcast of Jupiter with Io crossing the disk. And it looks like, yeah, we're still maintaining our video feed. Gosh, oh, I know I'm jinxing, jinxing it right now. And I do think I can see Io popping in and out right in through here. But again, that contrast is very low. But this is the northern equatorial belt, the southern equatorial belt, the great red spot. Unfortunately, let me switch you all back to Sky Safari. The great red spot isn't going to come out for us tonight. I think it comes out, yeah, right around. I'm not going to stay out until 1049. <laughs> so about 1049 is when the great red spot comes out. This, this program I'm using is called Sky Safari 6 Pro. I love it on both mobile and um, this is on my MacBook. But I use, I use it all the time in, um, in the mobile app as well as the desktop. There we go. Thank you all for joining me. What I'm going to do is take a, I'm going to run outside and check on the scope. Make sure we are good on our, we've crossed the zenith and I need to get a bearing on where we are with regards to the trees in my backyard. <laughs> so making sure that we're, uh, we're clearing that as well. So I'm gonna tr try, hopefully the feed will stay up and running and uh, I'm gonna leave it going here and I'll be back in just a second.
it is chilly out there. I think our temperature, oops, I think our temperature tonight is um, getting down into the 20s. I do have one tree that I might start having some branches come in across uh, our field, but right now we're looking really good. It's a really pretty sky out there. Thank you all for joining me. Sorry, I got a little light glare there off of my desk light. Try to make that a little bit better. But um, thank you for joining me. My name is Jeff Ball. I do mostly deep space astrophotography. And I like to do videos that highlight some of our dark sky locations, especially. I'm based out of West Virginia. And right now I'm set up. If you're, if you're just joining us, I'll... I have a video I'll probably show in a little bit that goes over the equipment that I'm using tonight. So I ask you to stay around for that and see what we do. But if you're new to my channel, I ask you to check it out. I do, again, a lot of deep space astrophotography. And I kind of what I try to do is supplement my images with insights into the locations that I do the deep space astrophotography from. In this case, it's a lot of dark sky sites, although I did have a wonderful chance to go to the Texas Star Party this year. And what a, what a really great bucket list event that was. And I hope to be able to get back to that at some point in the future. But most of the time I'm in dark skies of West Virginia. This is Jojo, my stray cat we just picked up. Jojo loves the keyboard on the computer, right? And she always has to be around to help. I know. We appreciate you. Jump in on chat. Let me know if you have seen Jupiter or Saturn live through a telescope with your own eyes. <laughs> and, but I thank you for joining us tonight. And we're, we still have some really nice views here of Jupiter. The seeing actually looks like it's steadying. And I ought to probably grab some video here. Grab some video. When I start grabbing video, you can see the frame, live frame rate presentation starts to drop. But I am actually connected via Ethernet cable to the, don't unplug my cable, Jojo, to, to the ASI Air. And uh, this is the first time I've really done a live stream with this setup. It seems to be working a little bit more steady right now. We've had a few glitches throughout the night as far as dropping the feed. And, uh, but actually, right now, the feed seems to be staying pretty active and engaged, so I'm uh, not too worried about that. What we were trying to monitor, ah, there we go, I lost, there we go, is uh, Io is crossing the face of Jupiter right now. And if I take you back, if you're just joining us, what we're doing is kind of simultaneously monitoring Sky Safari in real time, and this is Io. And one of the things I'd like to stay around for if I don't run into trees is this shadow crossing that's going to be coming up in about 20 minutes. At about, uh, well, 9.44. So, you know, at about 30, 33, 34, 35 minutes. Um, and that would be cool. I think we should be able to see that. IO right now is tough contrast of Io against that southern equatorial belt is not real strong. But jump in on chat. Let me know what you're doing, what, what you like to do in astronomy, if you observe, if you have a telescope, if you have seen the planets through a telescope. Hey, hold on, Richard. I see your post. I'll get to you. Uh, hey Jeff, where you live? Where do you live? Where do you live to get these shots? Um, yeah, Richard, I'm in. Um, I live in West Virginia. I live near a town of Huntington, West Virginia, and that's where I am right now for for these planetary streams. But um, my deep space astrophotography, I go to multiple locations. My primary go-to location is Spruce Knob the highest point in West Virginia. And uh, also, 
we have a wonderful, I just put up, have several videos that go over Spruce Knob. But we also have a new county park, a place called Calhoun County Park. And it is really becoming a full featured astronomy park and uh, just a great resource. So I'll put that in the chat as well. But thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us, Richard. I appreciate it. And uh, let me go ahead and respond in chat. So we've got that as well. And then there's a thing called narrow band imaging that I think does a couple things. It's artistically very creative and it presents scientific data that's a little different from an RGB presentation for deep space objects. And I do that right from my backyard. So come on, video feed. Hang in there. So I do uh, narrow band imaging from my backyard mostly, but I do supplement. I do O3 and S2 data from dark skies when possible. Oops, I used too many characters. <laughs> okay, so you got my you got my reply live here, but uh, do that narrow band imaging from the backyard or I, O3. I think still is impacted by light pollution, so I like to do it from a dark sky. So we got. Uh, Three folks watching now, thank you so much for joining us for this live stream of Jupiter. And uh, seeing looks pretty good. Let me go back to this 960p and I might capture some video right here. Throughout the night, I've just been capturing video and I'm going to evaluate that and stack it. I ask you to, oops, we dropped the, dropped the feed there. Um, check out my Instagram page as well as uh, my YouTube. My web page is earthandskyphoto.com. If you, if you will uh, indulge me here, I will share that resource with you. If uh, There we go. Let's do that. So this is my website. And all of the resources I've just talked about are on here. Uh, my full portfolio. And we talked about narrow band imaging. I really like narrow band imaging. It can present some scientific data with regards to hydrogen alpha, uh, oxygen three, and sodium two molecules in the you know, deep space. And there you can assign colors to those in the Classic Hubble palette is one way to do that. And then I have classic uh, astrophotography and RGB. One of the most recent pictures I shared was this NGC 1333. It has a combination of some reflection nebula, and these are uh, um, some protoplanetary disks in this nebulosity here. And it's just a great nebulosity of dust in the Milky Way. and you know, this is our window through the dust, but you know, the Milky Way is still at deep exposures, does reveal a lot of st dust structure almost anywhere that you look. There's also a link to my YouTube videos, 
And if you go to my contact information, there you can see a link to the YouTube channel. You got my email. And if you want, there we go. If you really want the details on my images, those are really posted up on my AstroBim page. And there you can see some images I've taken from the dark sky sites that I visit. And I like AstroBen. There's so much to learn from AstroBen. There's some amazing photography there. So definitely check out AstroBen when you get a chance. But And check out my webpage. I think it's a good resource, and I'm always available for uh, questions and answers on astrophotography or locations to go to or I uh, can do star parties, star tours uh, for your group, especially if you live here in the Huntington area. But um, that's uh, that's it. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. I am too. That's what the problem was. I, wow. You know, even on this uh, NASA page, they they're showing that I O shadow already coming across. Let me go back. Let me make sure you guys are caught up with me here. Let me go back to Sky Safari and make sure we are live. Sky Safari. Yeah, I don't think that's quite right from the Earth's viewpoint. That was the one thing about that NASA page is sometimes you can uh, manipulate that. So let's go back. Let's see if we can grab update our video feed and see how we're doing Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, Richard, I see your posts on your update that you're in northern Illinois. Um, well, you wouldn't be too hard to get west. <laughs> so, you know, going west, I'm sure you can find some pretty dark skies within hopefully a relatively short drive. But, uh, yeah, and you're also going further north. Um, yeah, we're pretty fortunate here in West Virginia in that we do have Fairly nice dark skies, especially for the East Coast. We definitely have uh, good skies for the East Coast. and um, But there's nothing like out West. But again, if you're looking to do just imaging, if you're looking to do imaging, narrow band imaging from moderately light polluted areas is a fun way to do it. If you're looking to observe, I just encourage you, um, to be honest, a pair of binoculars is is a great tool and uh, if you're going out west for a national park trip just always make, try to schedule it around a new moon and uh, you will be amazed at the skies out west and then a pair of binoculars is all you need i think i can see io really starting right in through here if i'm guessing i think it's right here in about the middle of that southern equatorial band if you're just joining us we are watching Io cross the face of Jupiter here as best as we can, and we're maybe going to hang in there for a shadow transit starting from Io here soon. Let me show you the Sky Safari. Yeah, we're pretty much, yeah, it's almost in the middle. I think we're picking that up. Uh, again, this is uh, a little reverse. This my live stream image is reversed. I think I may be able to actually change that. Let me take you back to the scene. Let me go to ASI Air, I believe. There is a way for me to, yeah, I can, let me see if flipping it gives us uh, flipping horizontally. I'm not sure. Not sure that did it, but let's stick with that presentation here for a bit. Gives us a little different, and then we can see if we 
really are picking up IO. Let me go into a little smaller. Can you see IO there in that feed? Can you see IO on the face of Jupiter? Um, it's tough. It's tough. That IO contrast really gets lost. It's in, let me see here, one of these southern belts. Let me go even a little closer. Yeah, go back out. It's tough to pick out. Tough to pick out that IO contrast. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're new to the broadcast, welcome. I did have a story to share with you that So Jupiter walks into a bar and sits down and says, you know, I'm the largest, grandest planet of them all. I want the largest beer, the best beer that you got. And Saturn walks in, sits down and says, I'm the most beautiful planet of the system. I need the fanciest drink that you have. And Pluto walks in and Pluto, you know, says, well, I was demoted, but can you just give me a shot? So that's, that's a dad Jupiter joke. Sorry about that. Looks like we might have some clouds coming in, losing the brightness on my image. And let me see here. Let's increase our gain a little bit. And yeah, I don't know. We might have some clouds coming in. Because it looks like the details breaking down too. Yeah. Give me a second. Let me go out and take a gander at the sky. It won't be long because it's cold. No, the sky's pretty perfect. I think what might be happening is I'm getting getting into some of those tree limbs. So what might happen is we'll have some some sporadic moments of clarity. Hi, Jojo. If you're just joining us, Jojo's my new cat, and Jojo's very needy. <laughs> She's a stray, and she likes to go back out. I have a feeling, yeah, I'm crossing into these some of these limbs that are uh, probably compromising the contrast of the image because I can see it's breaking down. Just to show you, we took some images, uh, some video earlier. Actually, I should have done a live planetary stacking. I've not done that with um, the ZWO. But uh, just to go back earlier, to show you IO that would have been off the disk so this is the image from earlier, and you can see now this video does flip the live view. So, but Io is right here, is starting to approach the uh, Jupiter disk. And let me go to one, maybe this one. Yeah, see Io still getting closer. Boy, that's a nice steady video there. That really looks good. That that will probably stack up to a pretty good image. Hey Todd, thank you for joining us. 
Really appreciate it. Love to fly drones. Hey, I, I like to fly drones too. And uh, they're challenging, but it's fun. And Richard, uh, I do have, uh, do have some solar videos. I'll tell you what I'll do is let me show you, uh, since you're asking, what I could do is show you what I would love to do more of this, but it takes a lot of time and my Windows computer is down. And that is the computer that has most of the software needed to do this video compilation for solar imaging. And if you go to, well, let me see here. If you go to my website and go to the blog. And so this is a st still image. Great solar prominence back on November 23rd. But I think there's the um, lunar eclipse, one of my favorite locations to go to, capture that lunar eclipse. This is almost having star party. And all the, yeah, let me see here real quick if I have that. Yeah, here we go. Richard, this is an animation that I did of a solar prominence. And this was, I think, yeah, August 3rd. I love these. And I, it, you have to just get a lot of uh, still images to stack. You know, 24 frames basically gives you a second. So you need a lot of still images, taking them, you know, over 5, 10 seconds and then stack those. But the motion of these solar prominences, and I have a video that goes over the equipment that I use. This video would be... would be, uh, let me see here, previous page. It's um, Solar Observing and Imaging with the Daystar Quark Chromosphere Filter. That's the, that's the video that shows you the equipment that I use. And I think I talk a little bit about it. If you want to come up, uh, you can. A um, little video about it. So that, but I love, I love solar animation. Uh, videos, these prominences are just so dynamic. And to capture that solar prominence in motion is, um, is just amazing. Now what this is, this is four segment loop. Boy, I hope I'm not losing my internet. Uh, not sure why that's struggling. There's Jojo. <laughs> but uh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's now all of a sudden getting hung up. But I love it. Love it, Richard. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining. Thanks to all who are joining. Uh, let me go back here. And let's go back to see if we're still getting any. OK, this was, uh, we're back here on the videos. So let me see if I got one that shows IO really close to the disk. Yeah, that's my cat. Wow, that one. I'm going to have to go back and look. See, I think. Let me go back here. Yeah, this was good data right here. Oh. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, that that was good. And there's IO right there. So I'm hoping to get a good stacked image out of this tonight. Let me go back. Let's see if we're still capturing anything live. Okay. Still got it. Make sure I don't lose this here. Yeah, I'm definitely losing the quality of the image here. I'm probably in the trees, guys. So I apologize for that. 
Yeah, we're starting to break down. So what I will do is uh, shut down the broadcast for the evening. But w if you just joined us, one thing I might do here is show, again, the equipment that I use for tonight. I am getting into, I have a large tree on the front corner, and this one's, this is definitely, I can tell the, the Jupiter's starting to get into it. But uh, what I'm going to do is show a video of the scope setup that I had for tonight, and then I'll come back and we'll uh, close things out. Okay, if you're seeing this, then everything is working, and I barely got it somewhat set up here before darkness. Just to give you an overview of the equipment, this is the 130 EDF Astrophysics Refractor, about 900 millimeters in focal length on the Mach 1 go-to mount. And I have to set up in the street because my backyard has a very high tree line and prevents me from getting down below zero degrees declination. So that's why I have to set up in the street when I want to do something at that elevation. The camera, this is first light actually for the ASI 224MC. We are doing an ethernet connection from the ASI Air. This has worked well for me for planetary imaging. And this is going into my office where I hope it's nice and warm. So that's the setup tonight. We are using a 5X, there you think maybe you can see it. There we go. Teleview 5X Barlow. And hopefully all of this is working. So that's our broadcast for tonight. I got caught in my trees to the west and we're not gonna be able to see that shadow transit, which literally is only about seven minutes away. Having said that, let me go back and let's just do one last check-in on the live feed, but I believe I'm probably starting to get too many, too many branches that are uh, yeah, gonna compromise the view. It's just not gonna be any good. Just to give you an idea, you know, the, yeah, that's a really poor image. Again, let me show you some of them. I should note the videos from tonight, but there were a few where the seeing really could just see popped in and uh, did nice. So this would be an example, and this was Io. We were watching Io approach the disk and started to move across the disk, and by the time we're finished here, it's probably about in there. But uh, that was that was a pretty good video right here of uh, Jupiter from tonight. And uh, But that's going to end our broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I will probably post the completed image on my website. Oops, sorry about that. If you, uh, again, if you haven't been to my website, I invite you to do so. It's at earthandskyphoto.com. And... That's where I, I check out the blog. It's where a lot of my most recent images and videos are posted. If you're on AstroBin, I invite you to uh, follow me on AstroBin, and I'll follow you. I generally follow everybody back who follows me. Uh, this is my AstroBin page. And this is where, if you really were getting into astrophotography, or if you're already wanting to know some of the details, some of the specs, you can go to AstroBin and so, for instance, on my most recent, uh, one of my most recent, what's called a narrow band image of this SH2-115 area, uh, that you can see the telescope used, the camera used, the mount used, the filters, the software, and sometimes I'll, and the total, total acquisition time, in particular for this image, was 36 hours. <laughs> And the locations I mentioned earlier that I go to Spruce Knob and Calhoun County and actually data for that image came back and we can interact on that page. So that's, that's AstroBim, but all of that can, uh, you can use my webpage here, earthandskyphoto.com as a jumping point off to all of those. Let me check, check chat one more time. Richard, that's funny. <laughs> you don't want me working with a chainsaw. But uh, thank you. That's uh, 
that is very very funny i uh will look for that in the uh in the shipment so <laughs> richard says he sent me a chainsaw for that tree i, I have a lot of trees <laughs> and i think yeah if you've watched that product uh the uh the equipment video that's one one reason why I have to travel for a lot of my deep space astrophotography is I can't get anything south of zero degrees and so you know my backyard's decent it's halfway dark it's a I'm going to do I got a sky quality measurement so next new moon I image from the backyard I'm going to take a actual sky quality measurement um I'm not sure exactly what to, I think I'm a Bortle 4 sky, uh, but uh, this one will really quantify it. And I'll, I'll do a, a series of measurements so we can really get a good, good, accurate, averaged readout for it. And I'm doing that on all my sites. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to participate in the sky quality measurement um, activities that, uh, logs that, that do that across, well, I, th I guess the world. But, um, yeah, that's one reason I have to travel. So, yeah, Richard, I, I, I don't think you want me with a chainsaw. I would not trust myself. But uh, one last chat. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Thanks to everybody who joined the broadcast. I'll try this again. I am somewhat frustrated a little bit with this Mac OS application of the ASI Air. I'm going to try to get an inexpensive Windows laptop and work with some of those Windows programs. But this kind of works, and this is my setup for now. So join me online, and thanks so much for stopping by the broadcast. And I hope you guys have a great Christmas and a great holiday, whatever you may be celebrating at this time of year, Hanukkah. And uh, hope you guys have clear skies and get out and enjoy a nice dark sky sometime this winter. The Orion constellation is great. Next week, there is a pretty cool astronomical event, but the weather does not look like it's going to cooperate. And that's where Mars is going to graze the lunar surface. And if you don't know about this, you might, um, you might check it out. Let me, if you've got a second here, what I might do is go to, if I can get my Sky Safari, if it is clear, I'm going to try to broadcast on this. But if it's not, then I could, I'm sure somebody will be broadcasting online. So I'm going to go to the moon and I'm going to go to, it's going to be on the morning of, well, is it the morning of December 7th? Let me back out. There's Mars. You can see. Let me go. Yeah, let me do this in minutes. Let me put that in motion. Yeah, you can see Mars right there. So that would be on the East Coast time. That's what? Starting around 12. I'm sorry. 9.35 p. I'm sorry. 10. 09 p.m. Let me zoom in. Now you have to check your location to see exactly how this is going to look. But as you can see, this is a pretty cool event on what night are we on here? So this is December 8th. Well, that's universal time, sorry. This will be December 7th, Eastern time at 1021. 1021. You can see what Mars is doing. In my case, it's not going, I don't think it gets occulted by the moon. See, I still have some space. You could be in an area where it will literally black out Mars. The moon will black out Mars. But ideally, this would kind of be the, the view, although the moon's going to be rel, really bright relative to Mars. So you have to factor that in. But this, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I did not have the moon centered. But um, that's kind of what's going to happen. December 7th, around 1030 Eastern Time, check your planetarium. A really cool event. If you have clear skies, this would look awesome in a telescope with some moderate power, you know, 100, 150x. Uh, this would be fantastic to view live. And uh, so I'll leave you guys with that. Can I call to talk? 
Uh, I think my number's on there, Richard. Uh, I think it's on the website. I'm not sure. I will double check that. If not, send me an email and I'll get you my number back to you. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can talk anytime. I'm good. I drive a lot for my job, so I've got some talk time. And okay, yeah, that's that's. I'm sorry. I thought I was back on me. Let me go back. But uh, yeah, Richard. Uh, I think. Let me check. It's on my website. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I keep that. I probably should protect that number a little bit more. <laughs> But, goodness, I don't know. Could I get any fewer spam calls on me? Um, draw me an email. I'll get you my number, and uh, we can talk, okay? But uh, thank you. Thanks for joining me. You guys have a great evening. And uh, clear skies, and stay in touch. Check out the channel. Talk to you later.